This is the world of the campus vets. Gus ate a bag of tortilla chips and got into some vitamins. They noticed last night that he had a bloody paw. It looks like he fell over and the rebar went right straight through and came out his hip. Western College of Veterinary Medicine, students in the teaching hospital learn to cope with animal emergencies under real life conditions. Gus has an appetite for anything and everything. His gluttonous ways have landed him in ER. Gus ate a bag of tortilla chips and got into some vitamins. Regular vitamins are not deadly to dogs. But these vitamin supplements are a concern to intern Dr. Rory Weens and student Suzanne Smith. This is one of the vitamins that he got into. It has some compounds in it that are toxic to dogs, one of them being theobromine. Um, it's a compound you can find in chocolate. You have to worry about potential seizures, and a dog could go into a coma with a serious overdose of theobromine. In this case, what goes in must come out. We use a drug called apomorphine, and that usually causes them to vomit within minutes. But all the vessels in the eyes absorb it really fast. Now it's just a matter of time. No, he's starting to salivate. This six-month-old colt tripped and fell on a piece of rebar. So this is flight. Okay, and Flight has a, a laceration, a cut, a, what happened? The owner, when she came out to the, the pasture, uh, she noticed that the horse was, was limping a little bit and had a little bit of blood on his tail and, and she could see the wound on his hip. And she saw the piece of metal sticking out of the ground and it had little pieces of flesh and blood sticking to it. Student Emma Ag quickly starts a physical exam of the young horse. It looks like he fell over, got the right side of his inside part of his leg, and the rebar went right straight through and came out his hip. Um, and he just stood up and it just came right back out again. And if it went into his abdomen and punctured his bladder or gut or something like that, it could be very serious. Flight's regular vet already flushed out the wound before referring the case to the college. Owner Lisa Jackson brought Flight's mother along to comfort the colt. He's important to me. He means a lot. He's a really sweet little character, and he sort of wins his way into your heart pretty easily. Jesse. Rick Bolt has been taking his golden retriever, Bessie, to the vet college to find out why she's been having seizures. He's hoping that this visit will finally bring some good news. Bessie to the hospital. Good girl. Today we're going to take her in for some imagery. I think she's going to have an ultrasound uh, to see what's what's going on there. A suspicious mass was discovered on x-rays. Now the veterinarians want to investigate it further with ultrasound. Hi. Hi. Okay, sounds Hi. good. Take care. All right, come on, Bessie. Resident Dr. Siva Sankar has spent many hours working on Bessie's case. As I said, I'm worried that this may be a cancer would be the biggest thought, which is difficult because I, I feel for the owners that they may have some hard decisions ahead of them. Gus has a history of really enjoying getting into and eating anything he can. Oh, yeah. Now a fast-acting drug is bringing up the tortilla chips and vitamin supplements Gus ate a short while ago. Hmm. There's some more. Poor Gus. We're going to look at the vomit to see if there is any material that we're concerned about that he threw back up. Uh, this lets us know if we have to worry more in the future about toxicity. In Gus's vomit, we found mostly some mushed up tortilla chips. There was no evidence of any pills. 
He doesn't appear to be showing any signs of toxicity. Already, Gus is feeling better and ready for his next meal. But this one will be a little tough to swallow, even for Gus. This is charcoal, and we're going to force him to eat it. And that's going to help for the stuff that he did ingest not to um, get absorbed. Okay, Gus. Come here. Good boy. Oh, first we make you throw up, and then we make you eat this yucky stuff. Early this morning, flight fell on a steel rod in his pasture. It penetrated the colt's leg from his groin to his hip. We haven't had a really good chance yet to look at the wound, just because it's not in the safest position to examine it between his back legs. Student Emma Ag prepares a sedative. It will help calm the injured colt for his exam. Good, very good. In no time, Flight is more interested in a nap than in an exam. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to keep hitting you. <laughs> don't want you to fall over. The drugs are working really well, so he's a little bit wobbly and he's not quite sure where his feet are. And he's, he's just a baby, but he's heavy. Emma's supervisor, Dr. Troy Butt, wants to know if the metal rod damaged anything vital as it traveled through the horse's leg. He's going to use a probe to more closely examine the wound. We're going to place this probe in the tract and then hopefully we can follow it down. Coming up, Bessie undergoes ultrasound in a search for answers. I really feel like if there were something really bad going on, that it would have progressed much more quickly. Bessie is undergoing ultrasound. The vet team hopes to answer a big question. Does the golden retriever have some form of cancer? Nothing seems out of the ordinary until Dr. Tryon from the medical imaging faculty reaches the dog's chest. This is the little mass that we're looking at. So it's what, three and a half centimeters, just over three and a half centimeters by just under half a centimeter wide. Dr. Sivas Sankar uses ultrasound as a guide to take some cell samples from the mysterious mass. It's gonna be tough to get to because it's under that darn rib. Once she has sent the cells to the lab for analysis, Dr. Sivas Sankar updates Bessie's owners, Rick and Carla. <laughs> How soon will we get results? We may have preliminaries by the end of the day. And again, there's the worry if that is, you know, a cancerous process. Is it attached to the rib or is it? It doesn't look to be associated with the rib. So as far as a chondrosarcoma, rib-based cancer is less likely. We may not get a clear-cut answer, but it's the least invasive way to get an idea of what it may be. While they wait for the results, Bessie's owners try to remain positive. I really feel like if there were something really bad going on, that it would have progressed much more quickly. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic. Yeah. He didn't enjoy the charcoal, no, but who would, really? <laughs> the charcoal will prevent Gus from absorbing toxins from the vitamin supplements he ate. We're going to put an IV catheter in him and fill him full of fluid so that if he did absorb any toxins, then the kidneys will help wash it out. There, okay. You are a good boy, aren't you? You are so good. We're going to keep him overnight and we're going to give him his fluids and just keep him under observation to make sure he's not showing any signs of toxicity. Right, Gus? Flight had his thigh badly punctured by a steel rod. The veterinary team tries to find the path taken by the rod. What we're gonna do is put in a fairly stiff catheter and hope that we can follow the tract down and come out the exit hole. Then if we re-ultrasound, we should be able to follow the catheter and see exactly where it went. Although the ultrasound shows no sign of serious damage, 
the wound is too inflamed to allow the probe to pass all the way through. Then they try flushing the wound with a sterile saline solution. We're still just trying to make sure that the wound isn't interrupting any of the major blood vessels or it's not into the pelvis as well. Anything there? No. Okay. There's so much inflammation, so much swelling in the muscle, in the muscle bellies themselves that they've actually swollen and closed off the wound. Um, so it doesn't allow the probe to go through or the fluid to go through. Is that okay? They give flight an anti-inflammatory drug to reduce the swelling. Baby. Thank you very much. If the much. wound can't drain, a dangerous infection could build up. Bessie is back. The last test on the mass in her chest proved inconclusive. The next step is a true cut biopsy to get a sample of the suspicious mass. Lay down. There we go. You're feeling that a little. The true cut refers to the instrument used that it gets a small little sliver of tissue. So rather than just sucking out a small amount of cells, it's getting a little piece of tissue. So it'll give us a little more to go on. This is the mass here. This white speck is the needle as it's trying to get samples of the tissue. So far, it. Mm -hmm. While they wait for the lab to analyze the biopsy, Dr. Siva Sankar checks the latest x rays with student Tara Trimble. There are some ominous changes. So, this right here is the mass that we're worried about on Bessie, and that was taken a month ago. And then this was taken two days ago. It's gotten thicker and it's gotten longer compared to what it was a month ago. Whatever it is, it's growing quickly. They need a diagnosis and fast. Gus is doing great today. He doesn't seem to be showing any signs of toxicity. Gus's owner, Joanne Pichot, is all too familiar with her dog's taste for adventure. He seems to be pretty resilient because he eats garbage, so... <laughs> Hopefully that this will be okay. Hi, Gussie. Hi, Pumpkin. Joanne Hi, plans to keep a closer eye on Gus's indiscriminating dining habits. Her greatest hope? That he stays out of the garbage <laughs> and quits eating stuff off the counter. <laughs> Next, the students try to figure out why Oreo's paw won't heal. Michael Langhorst is going the distance for his stepdaughter's guinea pig. He's driven two hours just to get Oreo the help he needs. I brought in uh, my daughter's uh, guinea pig Oreo because he has an infected foot. This is Oreo? This is Oreo. We yeah, looks like an Oreo too, doesn't he? <laughs> it's okay. Maybe a little fatty. Hey, part sounds good. Oreo's left paw is quite swollen. It's about two to three times larger than his right paw. A foot infection is serious business for a guinea pig. If it spreads to the bone, it can be deadly. Okay, I think I'll take him into the back and we'll double check. The results of the biopsy on Bessie are back telling Bessie's owners, Rick and Carla, that cancer is all but confirmed is difficult for resident Dr. Siva Sankar. The true cut biopsy, the pathologist had said it was consistent with the soft tissue sarcoma. It's emotional to see how attached they are to her and how much they love her and, and that it is hard for them to be going through this as owners. The main thing we're at is trying to determine the benefits versus the, the risks of going in there and considering removing that mass. And it's a fairly invasive procedure. I guess my biggest worry, it's been enlarging that it's acting aggressively. Although Rick and Carla want to avoid invasive procedures, surgery gives them some hope. And if there's no sign of spread, there's a chance of removing it and that being curative and perhaps giving her five years, seven years instead of one year, that it would be worth the risk of the surgery. But if the cancer has spread, surgery may not be able to save Bessie. 
the next step all hinges on one final test. No significant infection has developed in Flight's puncture wound over the last few days. And that is great news for Flight's owner, Lisa Jackson. I think he's going to be all right. That's good. OK? Thank you. The owner, Lisa, is very relieved. Um, this should heal up relatively simply. I was prepared for the worst, and this is I mean, it, it was unfortunate that this had to happen, but it sounds like a best case scenario, so that's good. Now it's time for Flight and his mom to go home. This little guy is so lucky. It's actually a little bit of a miracle that it didn't hit any of the vital structures in that area. Um, looks like as long as the wound heals well, which it looks like it's going to do, he should be absolutely fine within a month or so. So this is Oreo. He's about a two-year-old male neutered guinea pig. They noticed last night that he had a bloody paw. Oreo's owner suspects the wound is a result of a guinea pig family feud. Maybe fighting between his sons and himself. <laughs> they live together in one cage. So. Oreo's foot is badly swollen. Suzanne Smith wants her supervisor, Dr. Rory Weens, to take a look. Order. Well, we have two options. We could just send him home with a topical antibiotic, or we could try and explore and see if there's something in there, get him under sedation. It doesn't really look like there's a penetrating, like anything in there right now. What we'd like to do is send him home on some oral antibiotic, okay. and that will help uh, decrease the swelling. Okay. If Oreo doesn't respond to the antibiotics, he'll be brought back for some exploratory surgery. Next, Bessie's decisive test. Bessie's in to do a CAT scan or CT scan to be able to get a better look at that mass in her chest, as well as to get a look at the rest of her lungs to see if there's any signs of spread or metastases. It's all come down to this, a CT scan to find out whether Bessie's cancer is isolated or spreading. Here's the mass. It quickly becomes clear that Bessie is in worse shape than they thought. We're finding evidence of other masses, so other cancers at this point. The spread of the cancer makes a cure unlikely for Bessie. This isn't what Dr. Sivasankar was hoping to tell Bessie's owners. It's always hard to give people bad news as far as confirming that there is a fatal disease present. The antibiotics didn't work on Oreo's infected foot. More drastic action is needed. So we are going to lance it open and drain out the debris within to try and get it clean and allow it a chance to heal. The scab on the bottom of his foot is acting almost like a pebble in your shoe. It's just chronically irritating and causing it to swell. Yeah. Yep. As soon as Oreo is sedated, Suzanne cleans and flushes the wound. Under the supervision of faculty veterinarian Dr. Parker and intern Dr. Yazer. But do you want to rip off a piece of tape for me? Okay, babe, we need to wake up now. I'm just recovering Oreo from his anesthetic. Make sure that he wakes up okay. And if he's doing okay, he can go home this afternoon. There's Oreo. Michael Langhorst and his stepdaughter Roseanne are happy to have their guinea pig back. He has a little bandage on right now. <laughs> if you can, it would be a good idea to uh, soak his foot twice a day if you can, in like a warmish solution of water and Epsom salts, and that will soften it up and allow it to heal. So it's a relief, of course. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Probably For now, they will clean Oreo's wound, okay. keep an eye on Bye. him, and come back in a few days for a checkup. The latest test results do not bode well for Bessie. 
it appears her cancer is spreading, so surgery may not be able to save her now. Dr. Sivasankar faces a painful discussion with the dog's owners. Seeing that we have signs of possible spread, it makes her overall prognosis worse, and we've talked about you know, how that changes her overall outlook, and they've decided, you know, they want to stop here as far as not pursuing surgery. There comes a time when you've got to ensure her best interests are being met. It's just very hard. We've done all we could, so uh, we're, we're, uh, we're comfortable with that aspect of it, yeah. although we're certainly not uh, happy that Bessie's dying. dying. What you got? Come here, girl. Come here. Even though this all seems to be progressing fairly quickly, I hope that in the near future they have some quality time with her. Good girl, Bessie. Good girl. That's a good girl. Come on, Bess. It may help um, to watch a story about a dog having a terminal illness because it's very much like life. Go get him. I think we've been preparing for eight or nine months to have a bad diagnosis, and uh, even when you get it, it's not very easy. It'll be a good story for people to learn from, I hope. Chasing the duck.